There is no timeline for John Morant's return to the Memphis Grizzlies, and the situation does not make an ounce of sense. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to The Fumble. I'm Jackie Ray. Do me a favor and make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, and then you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Jackie Ray TV. So let's do a quick recap for everyone, okay? Back in September, John ja Morant, who was 23, was sued after allegedly beating up a 17-year-old during a pickup game. Now, by the 17-year-old's own admission, he and John ja Morant got into an argument, and he threw a basketball at Morant that hit him in the face, and Morant socked him. If that was the end of it, I'd be cool with it, no harm, no foul. But the 17-year-old claims things got much worse. He says he was knocked to the ground and Morant hit him 12 to 13 times while he was on the ground before his friends jumped in and they hit him four to five more times. The teenager claims that as he got up to leave after the fight, Morant went to his house and reemerged with a gun. Morant allegedly has a weapon visible in his waistband with his hands on the gun. You have questions, right? Me too. First, who are these whack ass friends that would rather bring John Morant down to their level rather than protect him from any legal battle that could cost him everything? Second, why are you trying to gangsta flex on anyone, especially a teenager? And finally, so why are you acting like this? Whoever did the eight mile breakdown of this on Twitter and Instagram, you nailed it. John Morant has a life straight from the Cosby Show. Calm down, first of all, okay, that was an iconic show with strong black people. We not gonna just give it up. But the point is, Jaw's life was very much like that. Private schools, loving family, and a bright future. But now, it feels like he's hell-bent on becoming the NBA version of Chris Brown and giving up all of that for some gang. Not saying he's in a gang, I'm saying, you know, the Chris Brown. Anyway, stay with me. While the case is still pending, he's on his own IG Live in a strip club flashing a gun. Could it be the same gun? I don't know. But once again, he was with friends who didn't care enough to stop him. Colorado does have an open carry law, but he was in Glendale, tiny town where the cops love to lock you up. And even though Colorado is open carry, it is illegal to possess a firearm while you are under the influence of alcohol. Not to mention the NBA rules prohibit a player from possessing a firearm while on team property or traveling on team business. Now we don't know for sure if he was intoxicated, but if he wasn't and he was just doing that for no reason, y'all might need to ask for that private school money back. But he was in Denver because the Grizzlies faced the Nuggets on March 3rd. Sounds like team business to me. But the real question is, why is he acting like this? It feels to me that he's just doing this to fit in with the wrong crowd. So y'all please never front for street cred. Despite what the mumble rap has taught you, the streets are not credible. They are dangerous and foolish. Jaws obviously going to have to pay for his Tony Montana pickup game. But after that, I hope he really never talks to these friends again because I don't feel like they have his best interest at heart. But y'all let me know what you think and I will keep you updated as this develops. Once again, I'm Jackie Ray. Thanks for watching The Fumble.